Good afternoon and welcome to Viscount Leisure. My name's Chris and I'll be doing a virtual tour around this caravan for you this afternoon, setting off around the outside, moving through around to the inside and then finishing off uh, with operating the motor mover which this van has got and I'm moving it around to show and demonstrate that. So with no further ado, we're going to set off by the uh, entrance door the way into your caravan commonly known in the trade as a habitation door pull the handle open the door the door will come back and clip back into position so it doesn't blow shut on us built into the door frame is our door fly screen which we can close off to keep all those midges out and to keep a bit of shade in there on days like today this is commonly known as a stable door i can part it over fetch it round and shut it off so i've got half a door open half a door closed Crutch it back, put it into position, but like so. I can lock the door from inside by lifting that up, unlock it by lifting that down like so, pushing the little black lever in on the door handle. I can then close the door onto there using one of two keys that fits all the locks on here. I can then lock the door by turning it forward and then putting it in, turn it to the rear, will unlock the door and clip it back into position like so. Moving around in a clockwise direction above the door, we've got our awning light. That awning light is switched from a switch inside just here. Okay, and that will switch that on and off like so. And we'll see that a little bit better when we get inside very shortly. Next thing we come across is our locker door here. This gives me access to storage under the front bench seat. And you can see in there, you've got plenty of storage access from outside here or from inside in our caravan. So we then come forwards and stand back and look. There's two things on your caravan we have four of. One of those things is what we call the grab handles here. So we've got our grab handles that we can manhandle the van around by pulling it, pushing it, using four adults, one on each corner, to manoeuvre that around. The other thing we've got four of is four corner steadies. Those four corner steadies, as described, one on each corner of the van to steady the van. So when you get on sites, the first thing you need to do is reverse your van into your pitch that's allocated to you. Once you've reversed it into your pitch, then you need to get it level from left to right while you're still connected to your car. You do this by uh, getting, out, uh, getting a pair of levelling wedges and putting the levelling wedges under the side that's low. On the lowest side, then reverse up until the van's level from left to right. Once you've done this, you can then come along and disconnect it from your tow vehicle, as we discuss in a minute. Once it's disconnected from your tow vehicle, you can use what's known as a jockey wheel, i.e. this jockey wheel here, which will raise and lower my caravan, okay, to get it level from front to back. Once I've levelled it from left to right, front to back, then I can allow, then I can go around and wind down all my corner steadies, and that's done with the handle supplied here, like so. There, that will push push in, turn around and give me a handle and then just down here on the front edge there is my corner steady no. and then I can put that in and wind that, take them up and put them back down again. Now they are purely designed there to level and st or to stabilise the van. They're not designed to level the van in any way, lift it, try to change the wheel or jack it up. They're purely there as a stabilising unit. Once I've got all four legs down I can then allow the, um, my, my, my people, my family into the van without the risk of it tipping over. So that's my procedure for those legs there. We said we'd discuss here um, the front. This is our uh, drawbar for our airframe, which connects us to the car for towing. We've already discussed the jockey wheel and we already know that that lifts and raises the van up and down. With the legs not on there, I can raise that up and then be able to lower the front down onto the tow ball of my tow vehicle. The next thing I come across from my jockey wheel is my handbrake, which is over on the right hand side here. And there's my handbrake. Push the button in and press it down. A firm press releases that to the ground. Connected to the end of my handbrake is my breakaway cable. The breakaway cable connects around the tow ball of my tow vehicle or to an eye on the tow ball if you have one. And should the caravan become detached from your tow vehicle, okay, for any reason, what that will do is the breakaway cable will snatch at the handbrake, thus snatching that on like so, stopping your caravan in a safe, controlled manner until you realise it's missing and turn around to go back and collect it. 
The other thing that connects up to your car is your 13 pin on this caravan, your 13 pin electrics goes back and connects to your caravan. So if you're having a tow bar fitted, a new tow bar for the first time, then you want to make sure that you're wired up for 13 pin electrics. And that goes in and a twist. Now what that does is that will operate primarily all your lights. So that will do all the lights. Um, so your, your side lights, marker lights, indicators, uh, brake light, reversing lights, high level lights, etc. That will all operate through there. It does two other things as well. <coughs> One of those other things it does is it operates a fridge on 12 volts. When I'm traveling from A to B, C to D, I can select the dial on my fridge, which shows me a battery sign, but will only work when it's connected to my car with the engine running. And that's because it comes off the charging system, the engine to hit a little element in the fridge to make it operate. The other thing it does also is it charges my leisure battery. So on here, I've got a leisure battery and that leisure battery does all the lighting, uh, igniters, water pumps, etc., etc., in your vans. Everything within your van realistically runs off 12 volts. This caravan came in with a hitch lock, so we're leaving it with you. So you'll get the hitch lock on here. The long, thin, slender Malenko key goes into there like so. And what we do is we turn it, key in. He says. I'll just put it on here so I shouldn't have a problem getting it off really. There we are. That's fairly brand new I think that's the problem. The lock comes out then it clicks back together like that through there and I can release it back in. There we go we're just a little bit sticky I think. Okay so we can put the lock down there like so and then the cover comes off there just like that and then Underneath here, we've got an added security ball and that releases from there like so. So simulating that that is the tow ball of our tow vehicle, we reverse back up until we're underneath, the tow ball is underneath our head there and then we wind down on the jockey wheel and then that will click down onto my tow ball of my vehicle. Once it's down and clicked down like so, I then wind the jockey wheel back up and watch the back of my tow vehicle raise. Once the back of my tow vehicle is raised up in the air, I know that it's fully on, fully connected. I then come along and push down on what is known as the stabilizing head. Now inside there, there's four plastic thrust pads. Those four plastic thrust pads minimize the sway from left to right and the pitch to roll from up and down. And they do that by locking on to a nice, clean, shiny tow ball of your vehicle. Okay, because there are thrust plastic thrust pads that go in the end of there and they just sit inside and they will lock down. It's, so it's paramount importance before you come to collect your van that you make sure that it's all clean and shiny degreased so that to operate in its full correct manner. Now there's quite a lot to learn here so don't be worried when you come to collect your caravan then we will go through this bit with you for the very first time but you'll always have this also to refer to. Once you've got on site you put that little black ball back inside and lock the vehicle up your caravan up for safety reasons so you can drop the hitch lock back on there like so and then get your pin that goes through there Drop that into there and drop that onto there like so. And there you have your hitch lock on. So your caravan's nice and secured. No one's going to pinch it or take it away. So now working along, coming up the side here, the first thing we come across here is our water barrel. So there's several things you're going to have to buy if you're new to caravanning. If not, you'll transfer it from van to van. But one of those things, if you're new, is going to be your aqua roll. And that's known as an aqua roll. It's a 40 litre water barrel. That 40 litre water barrel, you run off when you get on site, fill it up with water, come back, drop the submersible pump into it, plug that into the side of the van like so, and then we can go in and operate our taps um, and, 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 and purge the system and get water through, as we'll see when we get inside the van. 
So that's the aqua roll and water pump. We then come beside that to our boiler flue. Now the boiler's just sat behind that and that boiler in here is a Truma boiler. It works on electric and or gas and it will heat my water and my uh, heat and do my heating in those cold months, not like today. Okay, and we'll see that and how it operates and how it controls when we get inside. The reason that we level the van, like we were discussing earlier, is for several reasons. One is our grey water. Okay, so the grey water is uh, the water from our wash hand basin, kitchen sink and shower. That comes out through those two grey points down there. We supply with you a grey water hose that goes into there, as I'll show you very shortly. And then you also need to purchase, when you purchase your Equiral, a waste master. So that waste master then would sit down here and take all the grey water in from our kitchen sink, wash hand basin, shower into that position there. The other reason we need to be level is for our fridge. We briefly touched on that earlier, that the fridge in this caravan, it might look domesticated when we get inside, but the reality of it is the fridge in here works completely different. It's a three-way fridge. It's got three separate heating mediums, and those heating mediums heat a liquid, a liquid ammonia in actual fact, and changes state to a gas. It's the gas that becomes the cooling agent, cools down the fridge, and then comes back as a liquid and reheats again. So I can uh, operate my fridge in any eventuality. So today, at the moment, I've got it running on gas. I had it on electric earlier. Okay, and I'll show you how that all works. So it's three independent methods are 240 volt electric, mid efficiency, gas, better efficiency, and your 12 volt when you're traveling from A to B, C to D with your tow vehicle running, which is minimal. Obviously, it goes through the amount of heat that gives. On this caravan you've got your wheel and we have a motor mover as we described earlier we'll demonstrate that um, when we get to the end of this and next along is something not a lot of people like to talk about but it's the toilet now don't be worried about your toilet the toilet in this caravan operates exactly the same as your toilet at home with a couple of differences instead of when you flush it going down a six inch soil pipe into a sewer and away it <coughs> goes down through a three inch gate valve into a holding tank Instead of the flush tank filling back up when I've used it, I manually fill my flush tank up with water and add a pink fragrance additive to it in the top here, which holds around about six to eight litres. The reason I do that is that it's got an internal pump in there. That pump, when I press a button on the toilet, will flush the, to flush the toilet. When I flush the toilet, the reason for adding the pink chemical is it gives you a nice fragrance smell when you do it. Secondly, it gives you... Um, it lubricates a pump that's internal to it and thirdly it mixes up with the blue chemical that you put in the toilet down below here very nicely ready uh, for operation so down to the workings of the toilet we'll see more of the toilet when we get inside but once you've been to the toilet it comes down into the holding tank i can extract the holding tank by lifting up the handle and pulling it out like so once i've got it out if for any reason that toilet didn't come out with the ease i've just demonstrated it's for one reason and one reason only when you look inside the van, you look and you see that there. If for any reason somebody, newcomer, somebody's left that toilet gate open when they flushed it because it's got to drop into the tank, it won't come out because that's across the van. So all you have to do is run into the van, operate the lever, put it back to that position and it will come out in and out with the ease I've just demonstrated. Once you've got that out there, you can either wheel it off or carry it off to what is known as an Elson point, which is a waste disposal for toilets on every caravan site you'll go to. Once you get there, give it a good shake up to break down the contents, turn the spout, removing the cap, putting it somewhere safe, well away from where you're about to empty the toilet. Once you've done that, spin it round, press the little air release button and you can empty the toilet out like so. Once it's emptied, every Elson point will have a hose pipe by it. You can wash your toilet out, clean it out to get it to the level of standard of cleanliness that you want it. Once you've done that, fetch it back to your van and then you can charge the toilet ready to operate. We do that by the good book stating 75 ml of blue chemical and adding two litres of water. Well, if you add two litres of water in my book, that's an awful lot of liquid of wastage. So I tend to put a couple of glugs out of my container of blue into there and not add any water when I'm using it. If I'm going to finish for the weekend and I'm out in a couple of weeks time, I just give it a little flush dust to dilute the blue I put down in the bottom. And in the winter, when I'm finished with it, I bleach it out, clean it out and leave it empty ready for next time or the following season. 
We talked about the pump in the top and that being a water tank. One thing with caravans, as you learn as you go on, is that they don't like the winter months, they don't like not to be lived in uh, or used, and they certainly don't like the frost. Because the water, as we all well know, when it water freezes, it expands. Inside there is a small little 12 volt pump. If we try to operate that, uh, and it's being frozen, you've got the risk that the pump might be split, damaged, or it won't work, or it'll blow a fuse, or several reasons why it won't, mainly frost damage. So we need to empty and drain that toilet down. We bend down here, we find that little black plastic tube clipped up in there like so. We can pinch that like so, and drain that toilet down, which I've already pre-done, because all our vans come out like that. Okay, so that's all empty and drained down. I tend to, when I go away, use and drain that down each time, and I put it into a gallon container. So when I come the next time, I put it back in again, ready to use. Okay, so that is A, efficient, and B, makes life quite simple. So that's draining that down. We will talk about winterization in depth when we finish off this demonstration after we've been inside. Coming round to the rear, there's the grab handles we talked about with our lighting clusters, number plate point, and our two back corner steadies there. And then we come round down through back to our entrance way in. We can then press that door down like so. And inside here, I'm going to pick it out as we go. I've got a little wheel brace, so I can check the wheel bolts on there. I've got my bar for my motor mover that I'm going to put there because we're going to need that in a minute. We supply you with a nice airframe cover to go over the workings at the front. There's the grey water hose that we talked about. There's a bag there to put your hitch lock in. And we've also left in here a wheel lock that came with the van. So you've got a nice wheel lock there. Keys are on your key ring, uh, okay, that will operate. And you can put that on the wheel as an added safety uh, security method. So you can see underneath here, which is the bed, you've got plenty of storage. And we can use and go into there um, from inside and out. Okay, next thing we come across is our mains hookup point. Something else you would need to purchase is a mains lead. Okay, from here. So, the golden rule with your mains lead is you'll most likely purchase a sort of 25 metre mains lead. And the golden rule is you plug it into your van first and then go off and plug it into your point of electric. Once you've finished, you then disconnect from your point of electric and come back and disconnect from your caravan. The reason we do that is because we're always dealing with dead power, we're never dealing with live power, so it reduces the risk of harm, injury or electrocution to yourselves. So, the other thing we like to say is, always flake out your mains lead as well, so make sure it's all rolled out. Lots of people tend to want to buy a little drum to coil it up on like so. If you have that plugged in, especially on a day like today, okay, in the sun, operating your heating for hot water, etc., you're going to draw a lot of current on there, it's going to overheat. So always make sure it's out in a nice straight line like so. Okay, so that then goes in and operates my van on everything 240, which we'll discuss when we get inside in a moment. Just behind this door here, we come to our gas locker there. So we've got our gas locker, which houses our bottle of gas. Our bottle of gas sat down in the back there. And a couple of rules and regs and hints and tips with this is, one is always make sure it's strapped in before you travel off, okay? This one can't move too far because it's sat in a nice little well. The valve on the top of the bottle there operates in a clockwise direction to close it, anti-clockwise to open it. That comes up through a hose which comes through a regulator which reduces bottle pressure down to van working pressure. And then that comes off down through the pipework into our van. When it goes into our caravan it goes through a series of isolators so that each appliance operated on gas in your caravan can be independently isolated as we will see when we go inside. Another good tip for this is once you've turned your gas on for the first time always go in and light your hobs because that purges any air that's got in the system out and you know that when you come to light such more technical things such as boiler, fridge etc it's going to light first time every time. Okay especially if you run out of gas it will draw and carry over some air. Once you're finished and you're getting ready for the road you must take off and turn off your gas. So turn your gas off before you drive off, turning in a clockwise direction. One point to notice, I will leave a spanner with the van, 
but this is a nut on there. It's a back to front thread. So you turn that clockwise to undo it, anti-clockwise to tighten it. And we will see this because that's my test bottle of gas. That's something else you would need to purchase. Okay, uh, is a bottle of gas, but that's my test bottle of gas on here because I need that ready for another demonstration afterwards. Okay, so you'll notice there's a little shelf here. Up until fairly recently, they used to do half size gas bottles. They're now obsolete, so there isn't a gas bottle that will fit on there, which will fit on that pipe. So unfortunately, if you run out of gas in that bottle, you need to um, make sure that you're somewhere where there's another bottle of gas because they don't do the half containers anymore. Okay, but your salesman or myself at any time can discuss that in more detail with you. Okay, so that's our gas leading on through back to our habitation door, ready to go inside our van. So inside we come and we can have a little look round before we start. Front two bench seats makes into another double, round through the kitchen area, rear bathroom, nice uh, side double bed there on the side. So starting off round the front, first thing we see is a handbook pack. So everything that came in with this van that's relevant to this van you'll find in there and that's your handbook pack. Okay, and you'll find that on the front seat of the van when you come to collect your van. We've got all our overhead lockers, so we can open that. Inside this one, we've got a TV aerial. That TV aerial is directional. I can raise it, lower it, direct it. Okay, and I can also alter the plane of the dish on the top by turning the handle, and that indicates there what position that's at. I'm making sure that it's in the green, okay, at the horizontal position like so. I'm making sure when we travel that's facing forwards with a red dot inboard and just a little click off on the side. From that area it comes down and round into our booster. From our booster it comes out to the booster off to our TV aerial point that we'll see very shortly. That again operates on 12 volts off the leisure battery and I can switch it on and off from the switch on the top left hand corner should I choose to want to do so. The cupboard automatically comes down and holds itself in the shut position with our lighting arrangements over that side round the other side. The one on this side does exactly the same. My pretty much the golden rule for me is I always suggest lightweight stuff up top, heavyweight stuff down below. So chocolate crisps and peanuts upstairs, wines, beers and spirits down below. We got a couple of reading lights. I can sit down the front here and read my, my book. Okay, directional to any position I want. Press the button, switches it on and off like so. I then come to my windows, which I can open up. And these windows here, I can open out little rotating thumb screws, open it to the position I want it, turn the thumb screw, lock it off like so, lock the other side off. And then I've got a fly screen to keep those midges out and I can vent it and shade it by lifting that up and down accordingly to how I want it. And we can then just support that as we release it so we don't release it too much. And that one there, release it down and close. And all your windows in your van will operate exactly the same like that. So all your front ones little blackout blind there because that window won't open that far but you've also got your fly screen there and a blackout blind that will come up like so back down okay window opens the same all the way around our van in the roof here i've also got a skylight i can open that up wide into position like so and i can set it and lock it off in a couple of positions on the way down to vent it and click it back shut and again that's got a fly screen and a blackout blind on there like that. To make the bed up here, the front, I pull the base here and that slides out that what's known as a leaderboard and my bed slats. My bed slats come out like so and what I tend to recommend to do is just drop that down into position like that and then flip that base cushion over there like so. Okay and that will drop into there do the same on that side and all of a sudden you've got a lovely level nice bed to lie on okay for any one of those guests that comes over and wants to stop over have sleep over because i've had one too many you've got the second to bed and that just drops back into position like so we saw this from the outside but we can see it from the inside now there we have the outside locker and here is our storage area that we saw from outside that just sits up in there like so comes down cushion goes in there and then I can drop that back into place like that 
and then my seat back goes through like so the same on this side I'm just going to open this side up there's a little bit more going on under this side okay so a few things we need to have a little look at your spare wheel is located under here in this front right hand corner just sitting there okay so that's your spare wheel for there and there's our boiler okay so the boiler here is a blown air heating system there's a, the flue coming out there and then it goes off through trunking systems around the van out through there blows the hot air very efficient very effective heating system your water comes in through there and around the system that boiler holds your water for heating your hot water okay uh, so what it does a bit like an old-fashioned immersion heater it puts cold water in the bottom pushes the hot water out the top when we select hot water it again is paramount importance that the yellow lever just there like so yep that's our drain lever drain valve to drain this boiler down we must do that in the winter in the vertical upright position like so it drains the water to ground parallel across the van or there like so it it is um it's closed okay so we will drain this down at the very end and discuss it all but that's your boiler works on gas and or electric and it's sat just under the seat down there and again once i've finished i can make sure that my seat that they tend to come across if you leave the cushions down it's ideal just to lift the cushion up like so and then that will fit in better um, it's all a little jiggle with a caravan just to tease these pieces into place um, there we go and there there we have it there's a little breakfast bar as I like to call it a little lift up flap at the front there okay that comes up so I've got like a little breakfast bar area I can sit here have my coffee breakfast in the morning okay if I lift that up and just release those flaps there it will drop back down again into position like so I've also got a fixed permanent table which is sat back here okay so that comes out freestanding table with the legs on the back and I can use that inside the van or outside the van okay and that will stand up in the front there for me so if I want to wine and dine family I can so do so the switch on the bulkhead just here that one is for my mood lights as I call them over there the one there is for my rear ones I've got a 12 volt socket there TV aerial and a 240 volt socket now that's because I can put a TV on here sit and watch it at the front spin it round and watch it while I'm in bed if however we're not connected to mains because we're wild camping in, in a park in the middle of nowhere somewhere anything that looks domesticated like that one there those two over there okay will not be powered up you need to be plugged into 240 volt electric so if you're not you will not be powered up and therefore you will not be able to use things such as hair dryers straighteners curlers razors shavers kettles toasters etc etc you must have 240 connected to operate your sockets so you've now seen your lounge with your tv space your lights etc okay in the lounge area how to make up your bed as a second bedroom area we're now going to move through into our kitchen area the first thing we come across is an extension lead to our kitchen area for serving up etc that operates the same as the one in the front little lift up flap like so it's a three gas burner hob so we turn on the gas press it hold it ignite it hold it release it and we can go from maximum to minimum through our three gas burners hold it release it and when they're lit one two and three like so i can turn them all down to a simmering and back up to maximum once they're at maximum i can then turn around and switch them off combination oven and grill so i can either use it as a grill or an oven if i turn the dial to the left hand side press light ignite and hold there is my oven lit as you can see and here down the bottom and I can set that from quarter through to nine okay no different from 180 through to 240 or 120 through to 240 use the grill turn it to the opposite direction press light ignite 
one position only and then I use the tray to move the grill tram up and down to cook my toast in the morning or burn it if I have it too far to the top. So you can move that to alter the heat on that like so. Once I've finished I can fetch the glass hob down and there is a, another addition to my worktop area. Down below that here I have got cupboard for storage and from that cupboard from storage I've then got three gas isolating valves. So those three gas isolating valves are on the ends, I'll tell you what they are. My fridge, my fridge is that one, my cooker is that one and my boiler is the other one. So I can independently isolate those appliances. Coming through to the fridge that we were discussing earlier, as we said, there's our fridge. Inside our fridge we've made a nice chunky chunk of ice there. Okay and that's all nicely freezing down in there running away on gas and I can see it's on glass because my selector's been selected to gas and my red needle is in the green position. If I turn that through now to electric I know the gas has gone out because the red needle's gone down into the silver and I'm now running on electric. The dial there is my thermostat dial so I can set my temperature from maximum to minimum or halfway between. To operate it from 12 volts with my engine running on my tow vehicle I select the battery sign. To light it on gas I select gas. I take my thermostat through to maximum, press and hold it in. Press the igniter, it'll ignite. Gas is ignited, red needle comes into the green, release it, let it stabilise and set the temperature to where you would like it. Okay, and that is the operation of your fridge, vertically up there is the fridge now switched off. Okay, so the fridge is now off because the light's gone out. There's the little blue light in there. When you're traveling, if you press that in and release it, you can put your fridge into a vented catch position. By putting the fridge in the vented catch position, it saves the risks of any mildew, bacterial, mold growth in your fridge for long-term storage. Up above the top here, we come to our wash hand bit, our kitchen sink rather, cold. Switch on, pump cuts in, pump runs, go through to hot, start to melt our ice. Wouch, it's hot. And you can see straight away, I'm just going to take that back. That's ever so hot and that's going to melt that. It's a mixer tap, same as you have at home, so I can set it to whatever position I want it. But that's running my water at approximately 60 degrees in there. Okay, so I'm running my water at 60 degrees. Inside there and you can see how hot that is and how efficient and how well it runs. Now all the water comes from the same boiler so wherever we go the water will be the same temperature. Above our kitchen here we've got another storage cupboard for our cereals, Weetabix, cornflakes etc and another storage cupboard there for plates, pans etc through and that one locks shut so nothing will fly out of it. This window operates exactly the same as the rest with fly screen and blind and the two little switches there that one does above lights that one does my little down lights down there like so. Just taking the camera off my head and pointing it towards the panel this is my heating and um, heating control panel my Truma panel okay showing me the time and what it's also showing me is my hot water is hot and I've got electric selected if I press the middle button like so it'll give me the first dial which is the motorhome with a thermometer in it if I press that you can see the heating's been off at the moment I won't get the heating working today because the room temperature of the van is over 30 degrees okay but let's just have a little look and see if it will no. If it was going to heat up the van, it would start to flash in there as the fact it was operating. Okay, so it's not having any of that because we're running about 33 in the van at the moment, I think. Okay, so we'll go back and we can set that. That's your room thermostat, so you can set that any degrees like you do a room thermostat at home. We're going to now park that in the off position. Hot press hot that's my water on hot 60 degrees as we've seen I can have it on eco which gives me 40 degrees of hot water or I can go to boost by going to boost that boosts the water and prioritizes it over my heating so the boiler will concentrate on heating my hot water and not heating my van when my hot water is up to temperature it will then start to heat my caravan up 
come across over to the next sign there and that is my power and I can select two kilowatts of electric one kilowatt of electric I can have gas and two kilowatts gas and one kilowatt or gas on its own and the reason that I have those is because like a day like today if I'm on a hookup site I just want to use my electric in the middle of winter if I'm on a hookup site and it's freezy freezy cold I want to use my gas and electric by mixing the fuels together very cleverly when it is up to temperature it will drop the gas out and just concentrate on the electric and if I've gone off down locally to Victoria Country Park on a rally or a field in the middle of nowhere I can just operate my heating and hot water on the gas system carrying on through those symbols I come across there that's off let me just introduce a couple of degrees because that's the fan for the boiler it won't work when it's switched off but when I've got something selected I can have it at a high temperature or an eco high or low fan speed setting to blow the heat around the van turning that back off again coming through to the next one now I don't get carried away with this otherwise I'll be here all day I can set a series of timers on here sometimes this confuses people and it's not advisable to do so but when you become more confident and efficient with it please feel free to have a play with it but that's where you can set timers okay uh, to, for heating to come on and off the next one over is my clock so I can set my time and day on there and I do that by selecting 13 54 for example and then I come over to my spanner temperature brightness 12 or 24 hours language index reset resets the one because if you confuse yourself or this if you press reset and then press PR set what you'll do is you will completely reset and recalibrate the whole system back to factory settings and then you need to go back in and reprogram it if you get to a stage where you want to get out you just press the return key there and back you come okay so back to the front screen so just to recap on that that's my room temperature okay through okay going back into the off position my hot water hot eco boost or off which we're going to switch off the electric I'm going to leave on two kilowatts for you the fan will now be off and the other settings the only other one is my uh, we went into settings because we've just done reset to switch this off press and hold it and this panel will switch off now you need to get in the procedure of switching that off before you switch your 12 volts off if that gets interrupted on 12 volts it'll come up with a little fault code it will reset but after a period of time if you continue to do it it doesn't overly like it so always remember to switch your Truma boiler panel off first before you go through into your final shutdown stages as we'll cover very shortly towards the end okay we're done around here for now what we're going to do is move into around the bed I can lift the bed up from here like so and see that this was where we were there's our outside locker your wheel lock your hitch lock um, airframe cover waist hose I'm just going to get in and under here because there is something quite important just down inside here and that important part is this unit here which is commonly known as a power supply unit if I split this three ways one's through there one through there one through the back I've got all my 12 volt fuses down there so that will identify my lighting circuit one two water pumps auxiliary sockets etc etc so if I've got something on 12 volt not working that's where I need to look I then come up to my 240 which is identified as my charger my boiler sockets etc and that's my master RCD with my three mcbs okay so very much like your domestic one at home if any one of those are tripped then you know we come and reset it now one little tip with this because you will go into panic mode if this happens to you you get on site you try to put your fridge on you try to put and it's not working on 240 instantly you straight away think it's your caravan in actual fact what you need to do is come under here press the little blue button on the top of that main RCD and if that doesn't do what it's just done i.e. trip down like so then you have got no power coming into your van this needs 240 volts for that to operate like that if you press that button and that doesn't happen it's because it's a site problem not a van problem and 99.9% .9 of people phoning in it's a site problem so always check on that little blue button in the back side of there is your battery charger 
OK, so we said that your leisure battery, which is just sat outside of the bed in the passageway here, OK, in the floor underneath here. All right, there it is. We said that that charged two ways. So that will charge when you're connected to your tow vehicle with the engine running and it'll also charge off that 240 volt charger situated in there like so. Now again this battery will come off this van. It doesn't come with a van. It will be disconnected. Okay. Um, it is not something that is left with vans because there's no warranty or guarantee given with them. So you need to speak to your salesperson on that as and when you purchase your van. Okay, and then that's just a, uh, a box to connect that to for all the wires to be behind it there like so. So I can come out from underneath the bed now, knowing that my window and blinds operate the same, my overhead cupboards are all the same, and my little reading lights so when I'm in bed, and my little shelves for my cup of tea in the morning are all nicely sat there like so. Along with a nice wardrobe here, so I've got a nice wardrobe shelving area and you can see the blow air heating pipe work coming out so i've got a duct down there i've also got a 240 volt socket there so i can use if i'm plugged into major electric hair dryer in the bathroom um etc the little two lights there, there's a little button switch there that switches those off like so okay so there's our bedroom leading through to our bathroom we've got a beautiful curved wall shower shower door on there okay and what i class as a tilt and turn rock and roll skylight so we can lift that up but you can shove that in any direction the reason being obviously when you shower you give out quite a bit of uh, steam and condensation so if it's raining or windy you want to be able to open that in any position so you can still open it and get rid of that steam and condensation you wash hand basin there on through to hot and it will it's got a little way to travel so it'll take a couple of minutes before i jump out my skin because it burns my fingers but there we go lovely and piping hot and through here there's your shower and you can see what a wonderful pressure shower it is now by having a shower with that pressure on there like so it's a bit unfortunate because it means everybody will want to stand under it not forgetting you've only got a 40 litre barrel of water so the ideal is you get in you get wet you switch your water off you soak down you shampoo up and then you rinse off and get out and then you let the next person in and it's surprising how many family members you can get through a 40 litre barrel okay um it's a good little game to play your storage cupboard under there shelving in there okay and then the toilet we talked about no difference to the toilet at home you can swivel the toilet like so swivel the toilet seat lift it up exactly the same and whether you choose to stand or sit is entirely up to you you go to the toilet as normal press the flush water will come out through there flush away through and once you're done grey lever on the side pulled away from you allows the water or your contents that you put into there to drain down into the bottom of the toilet once you're done always remember to close that because that retains the smells in the toilet and not in your caravan and allows the operator to go away and empty it with the ease to do it first time every time the only difference to your toilet at home is the seat doesn't swivel at home but it does in your caravan that makes it a bit of a better product in my eyes so there we have your bathroom toilet along with your pull switch for your lights just there like so coming through that really just leaves us the noisy bits which is my carbon monoxide detector and my smoke alarm there okay and then I've got my small control panel down here. If I press that, that's showing me there's 13 and a half point volts in my leisure battery. Okay, so that gives me a battery voltage reading. That's my water pump on and off. So if I leave that on now, turn my pump on, then I switch that off, the pump stops, switch it back on, my pump runs. So we can now switch it off because at the end at the hour, end of our demonstration. If I'd left all the lights on going around through here, for example, those, I'd gone out at night, the switch on there, if I switch it off, it's a master switch, it will kill every light off that I've left on. I do, however, tend to go around and switch all the lights out because we've had instances where people have took them away and they've not managed to get to sleep or they've switched everything off and lost the heat in because they didn't know how to switch a light off. So all your lights will be switched off and that was your outside light there on your awning light. That is my master 12 volt switch, which I can now switch off. So all the 12 volts in my caravan is now isolated. 
So there we go. One last thing to discuss just before we go, and that is winterization of your caravan. Really, really important, especially in those winter months. I tend to start to do a change of clocks or get into the habit of it straight away. We want to drain everything down because if it freezes the risk to your van water system is quite immense. As we've seen looking around as we've gone the taps look domesticated but they're actually only plastic. They're plastic fittings, push fittings and plastic pipework. Water freezes, it expands, when it expands it splits and cracks. So when we come to use it next season if we don't do the following procedure we do have the risk of those pipes being split and you having problems. So what do we need to do? Well we need to go around and we need to open every tap in the mid position, halfway between hot and cold. Okay, one, two and three. We'll do the other two in a minute because the first thing you really need to do is drain your boiler down, which is a yellow lever just underneath here. Okay, we can get our head hand down between the bed slat, lift that up into the vertical upright position and there we have it. That's now emptying my boiler to ground. So now when I set my taps to the mid position, I'm not going to get anything trickling out through the hot because it's draining down to ground. So we set those one and two and three in the mid position. The reason we set them in the mid position halfway house is because should the hot water or the cold water lines freeze in the winter, then it's got a 50-50 chance of coming out the end. You might come into your caravan in the winter months and come in here and find you've got a big icicle from the bottom of your tap down to there. Well that's not terrible news really because it means that the water's expanded and come out somewhere. So that's your system drained. The reality is before you do that you would empty your aqua roll and disconnect your pump. For ease I haven't done that in that order because I'll go out and do it when we go outside very shortly. So when you're all excited, you collected your van, you're going on site, you're getting yourself ready to go. What do you need to do when you get there? Well, the first thing you need to do is get your aqua roll, take it over to the tap, fill it up with water, fetch it back to your caravan, stand it up on its side and drop the water pump in and plug it into the side of the van. You then need to come into your van, go under the seat and change the yellow level from a vertical upright position to the parallel to the floor position. Once you've done that you can go around and close all your taps one, two and three. Once they're all closed you can come along and switch your master switch on and your water pump on. Come to your kitchen tap, open your kitchen tap on the cold side then spin it through to the hot side. What's then going to happen is the pump's going to run, it's going to take the water from the water barrel, fetch it into the van and push it into the boiler. From pushing the water into the boiler it's then going to push all the air out from the boiler coming out through the kitchen tap. So this tap's going to cough and splutter and spurt a little bit which really gives you time to go around and sort out your toilet tank because it can take up to three to four to five minutes. Especially if you did what I said and put your pink additive into a pink fluid into a gallon container you can just go and pour it into there by the time you come back you should have a constant flow of cold water coming out of the hot side of your tap. Once you've got a constant flow of hot water, a cold water coming out the hot side, you can close that tap and go and do it with the other two. That's your system known as fully purged and primed and ready to go. You can then come along, switch on your Truma control panel and start to heat up your hot water for washing up after your barbecue once you've settled down or your pint glasses in the morning and your wine glasses ready for the following evening. So that's exactly what you need to do and how you need to do it. So that now means we can go outside and start getting ready for the road, disconnecting a few things and showing you a little couple of bits out here. So the first thing we're going to do, there's a water trail coming down there from my boiler. That's the drain, water draining out of my boiler. I'm going to disconnect my water pump, push down there, pull it out and pull that off. Put the little cover over the end like so to protect, wipe that down and there is my water pump out. Close that down like so. Put and empty and drain your water barrel, clean it, wipe it and store it away somewhere where you want to store it in your caravan. Now I've left mine there ready for the next van. I'm just going to come round because you will find all the equipment for this van under the bed under this locker like so. So I'm just going to put the water pump down through in there just like that. I now want to come along and make sure that I turn my gas off for the experience of this. I'm going to turn it off and disconnect it. So we turn it off by turning that valve in a clockwise direction like so. Okay, and then we all remember this is a back to front thread. So we put the spanner on and turn it 
clockwise which will release the valve there like uh, the, the, the holding bolt we'll remove that from there like so chucking that away and I'm going to leave the spanner in there for you drop the strap off and then pull my bottom up and out like so okay so there's my bottle out ready for my next demonstration so that's your gas bottle you would unscrew that put another one back in and then put it back into situ just get the keys wherever I've left them okay I've left them somewhere that aren't with me at the moment I'll lock that up very shortly okay so it now means I can concentrate on my corner steadies now you would use this handle provided I'm actually going to go and store that away just inside there locker like so because what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my electric drill because that makes my life so much easier okay uh, and so much less time consuming okay so I do that by in there and just wind that up and that gives me the opportunity to sort of explain that we have a fully stocked shop on site which sells everything that you require for your caravanning experience including this adapter that goes into this electric drill tables chairs windbreaks barbecues awnings you name it we sell it wine glasses beer glasses plates cutlery everything for your experience of your caravan journey is sold in our shop here on site so just stretching the last leg up there like so that now just leaves me into the final position uh, I've been able to demonstrate the motor movement for you so we're going to simulate that you're going to uh, get ready my colleagues just shouting me he's disconnecting my uh, electric at the other end which means I can disconnect there uh, you would wind that up and store it away somewhere nice and safe I'm just going to put it down there ready for my next one and now we come to your motor mover when you come to collect your van you'll find all your set handset for your mover just sat inside the door there like so now what we're going to do is the first things first we're going to engage our mover and we do that with the bar provided making sure that that goes straight on like so all the way on and we come up and push and you can see that's engaging that mover and a firm push flat of hand just in case anything slips down there we go because you do really not want to trap your knuckles on the ground once you put one side on it's always a good idea to go around to the other side to make sure that's engaged so first couple of times you use it just to ensure that you're confident that it's going to operate both rollers at the same time with that into position like so we get our isolating key which is a little red key here and that fits into the isolating switch there turn it to the right it will not then come out and that's now taken power direct from my leisure battery straight through to my mover control box which is just sat in there the blue box on the floor once I've done that what I then need to do is I've come in here for the shade press the two green buttons like so and I get a steady green light on there once I've got that handset switched on and a steady green light if I swing that round to face the front I can then once the mover's engaged before I move it I need to release the handbrake pushing that off the caravan won't move because the rollers have taken over from the handbrake I can then push forwards on the handset and there we move our caravan forwards press backwards like so and there she'll go backwards slew to the left swing it to the right go forwards again this means that when you get home you can get it parked exactly where you want it tight to the wall away from the wall however as close back to the wall as you want and you can see with pinpoint accuracy I can hook this up onto my tow vehicle and I can park it as far where exactly I want it okay within you see a minute I come off it stops 
all right so that's your mortar mover once you've finished with it you've got it in the position you want it the first thing you need to do before you forget is put the handbrake on like so that will stop when i disconnect the uh, rollers from the tires it moving anywhere switch off my handset by pressing one of the green buttons like so removing my mortar mover isolating key from there again i tend to always store them just inside the door there and then operating and putting the bar back in like so lifting up that will then come off and down she goes and then put the bar back inside there ready for next time okay there we have completed the walk around of this lovely caravan this afternoon uh, my name's been Chris I'd like to thank you for purchasing from us at Viscount Leisure um, and thank you for watching and goodbye thank you <laughs>